Hi, my name is Angela Zoss. I work as an assessment and data visualization analyst at Duke University Libraries. Duke University sits on land that has long served as the site of meeting and exchange amongst a number of indigenous peoples, historically the Shikori, Catawba, and Eno people. I honor these people today by recognizing that this institution of higher education is built on unceded land. It is also important to recognize that the eight tribes that currently reside in North Carolina. These include the Koheri, Lumbee, Meharan, Okanichi Band of the Saponi Nation, Haliwa Saponi, Wakamasuan Saponi, and the Eastern Band of Cherokee. I honor and respect the diverse indigenous peoples connected to this territory on which I live and work. I honor these people today by recognizing them in order to break the cycle of colonization and the continued erasure of indigenous peoples. As part of this acknowledgement, I am taking time to learn more about the history of the area where I live and work, the role of my institution in the colonization of this area, and the ways that both higher education institutions and disciplines like data visualization and information science create and perpetuate harm to indigenous peoples. I encourage you to join me in exploring ways to support indigenous peoples near your home and workplace and through the work you do. Thank you. Reproducibility means that a research or data analysis project has been designed so that it can be precisely regenerated from start to finish with exactly the same result each time. While reproducibility is increasingly important to the design of research projects, in part because of the changing standards of the research community and the requirements of funding organizations, reproducibility should also be built into the design of visualizations from the beginning of the project. In this lecture, we will cover the basics of reproducibility for both data analysis projects and for visualizations that result from those projects. Many of the reasons to create reproducible research projects apply to data visualizations themselves. Reproducibility promotes transparency of the sources, analysis process, and design choices that go into a data visualization. Transparency helps empower visualization users to understand how the visualization was produced and what conclusions it supports. There are also practical reasons to approach data visualization with reproducibility in mind. A reproducible visualization design process makes it easier both to recreate the same figure over again and also to create variations of that figure that all have a similar style. While this can save the visualization creator time, it also promotes a consistent style of, across fi figures, which makes it easier for users to learn how to read the visualizations as a group and may improve comparisons across visualizations. Designing visualizations such that they are reproducible can make it slightly harder to customize those visualizations, however. For example, manually adding or moving chart elements like labels and annotations can happen based on expert review of the data trends and the design sense of the visualization creator. That part of the work may be more challenging to incorporate into a reproducible workflow. This checklist covers the major steps for creating a reproducible visualization. Organize your project, document your data sources, use scripts to analyze and visualize data, thoroughly document any manual steps, save outputs in archival quality open formats, and share everything publicly. The first step, organizing your project, relates to reproducibility because it ensures that anyone trying to reproduce your work, including yourself, can make sense of the project files and steps. Various systems for organizing project files exist, including the tier protocol, but the most important thing is to be consistent. Additional best practices can offer advice when there are different options for organizing the project. In a data visualization project, you may work with multiple data sets or multiple versions of the same data set. The original data set, sometimes called the raw data, might be something you create yourself or you might have gotten it from someone else. For reproducible data visualization and for general data use best practices, it is important to generate a full citation for any data set you obtain from another source. There are various styles for data citation, but no matter what style you use, it is crucial to find and include a persistent unique identifier for the data set from wherever it has been published. For example, a digital object identifier or DOI. 
Website URLs can change over time, so you want to make sure you can always track the raw data back to its original source. Whether you obtain the data from another source or create the data yourself, you must also fully document the data, both the raw data and any processed versions of the data. Again, there are different styles of documentation for data, but it is important that the basic properties of the data and all of the fields in the data set are fully documented. Proper interpretation of a visualization is based on understanding exactly how the data used in the visualization were created. A data visualization project commonly includes additional data cleaning and processing. The original data sets may be in the wrong format or structure for the data visualization software, or the data may need additional analysis, filtering, or aggregation before it can be visualized. Scripting or programming languages like Python, R, JavaScript, or Unix shell scripting are common ways of ensuring that a data project is reproducible. These languages are often powerful enough to be able to accomplish every step of the data cleaning and analysis workflow. Using scripting languages instead of manually cleaning data means that the code serves as a, the record of the analysis and reproducing the project won't rely on another person having to decipher a re researcher's notes or publications to figure out exactly what was done. To make sure that the project is fully reproducible, you should use a scripting language to accomplish all the tasks in the project. It is also best practice to leave your raw data in its original form. Any cleaning steps you undertake should create a new data set instead of overwriting the original. Finally, to make sure the scripts can be used for a long time, include additional documentation where the code is not self-explanatory and make sure you capture the exact versions of the tools you're using to run the script. Note that different scripting languages have different features. One thing to consider is whether the tool you're using is freely available or not. While using proprietary tools might be fine if you are reproducing your own code, it does make it harder for others to reproduce your work, and you may also lose access to those tools if you leave your institution or place of business. If you're unable to script all of the work you are doing, you can manually document your steps. This should be as thorough as possible. Include the tool version, the data cleaning and analysis steps you took, and the chart creation steps. Excellent documentation may include screenshots and intermediate versions of the data sets and visualizations. Imagine you're trying to help a future member of your lab or even a family member redo exactly what you did to create the visualization. Don't rely on the methods section of a publication to be sufficient for reproducibility. It is very difficult to include enough detail in a publication for someone else to truly reproduce a project, and method sections seldom cover the creation of the visualization. It is also important to save the outputs of your work in archival quality open formats. These formats vary depending on the type of output. For example, documentation files should be saved in a plain text format, for example, Markdown. Data files should be saved in a non proprietary format like a comma separated value file or other plain text formats and so forth. Make sure that you're using best practices to name the output files such that they make sense outside of their folder context. And also make sure that wherever possible you embed the project information in each output so that when the output file is separated from its original project folder it becomes um, easy to track that file back to its original project. Finally, you should make sure to share everything related to your project with the public. There are a variety of formats that make it easy to share projects from OSF to Figshare to GitHub. Different platforms have different features and different intended audiences, so it's important to consider what will work best for you for the kind of project you're doing, and for the community that will need to find and reuse your work. This video is part of a series of lectures recorded to teach about basic data visualization concepts. It was designed by members of the Visualizing the Future Symposia project and was made possible in part by a National Forum grant from the Institute of Museum and Library Services. 
This content is designed to be used freely. See the video description for more information about this lecture series and the Visualizing the Future Symposia project.